So everything we talked about yesterday or last class and today was about finding the minimum horizontal stress. Well, what about SH max? Can we, is there a way to find SH max via these same techniques? Okay. And so you might just go back and looking at the solution of the Kirsch equation, you say, well, um, if, if I say that the, the delta P here, normally, normally we would have the, the mud weight as the, you know, the, the mud weight minus the pore pressure. But if we say that, or if we figure that we can determine the exact pressure at which a fracture initiates. So we're going to call that the breakdown pressure. So this is the, the pressure at the instant a fracture initiates. Okay, this would be a tensile fracture, drilling of these tensile fractures. Okay, uh, and of course, the Kirsch equations are only valid for circles, perfect circles. So we sort of, there's an implicit assumption here that there's no breakouts. Okay? Because if you have breakouts, then, uh, you know, the more breakouts you have, the less accurate the, the solution of the Kirsch equations are. So this, there's an implicit assumption here that we're talking about a scenario where you have no breakouts and you can measure the pressure right at the instant of uh, fracture initiation. And then we can measure SH min from either a step rate test or a leak off test like we just talked about. Well, then we can use the Kirsch equations at the wellbore wall and there's no unknown, right? I mean, we, we well, we, we assume that we can measure the tensile, measure the tensile strength in the laboratory or just assume it's zero, okay? Um, we can, we know the pore pressure, we can determine somehow the initiation of the tensile fracture and we know SH min from a leak off test, then we may be able to just plug those numbers in and we have SH max. It's also noted that you can eliminate the need to actually uh, figure out what T0 is in the event that it is some positive value, right? I mean, some value, some, there is actually some tensile strength of the rock. If instead uh, of determining the, the break, the pressure um, right at the initiation of the, of, the, of the first fracture, what you would do is you would say, pressure up the well, create a fracture, and then reduce the pressure, and then do it again. In that case, you've already created a fracture, and so the tensile strength of the rock there is negligible, or zero, and so then the equation reduces to this. And then if you could figure out at which that fracture, the point at which that fracture is that already created, and it has to be still be small, it has to be a toughness dominated fracture, uh, then at, at the next uh, pressurization cycle, if you could figure out exactly when the crack grew again and you call that the, the formation, or the, I'm sorry, the breakdown pressure, then again, th this equation just simplifies to that one. And you would think you can just plug in the numbers and calculate SH max, okay? So th that's great in theory, but the truth is it doesn't really work very well in practice. And, and the reason is, you know, if you, if you consider a system that has this compressibility, right? So, um, you know, we talked about compressibility when we talked about material properties earlier in the class, and it's sort of, compressibility is like one over the bulk modulus, okay? And, um, and the bulk modulus is like a measure of a material's resistance to volumetric compression, right? So like the, the volumetric strain divided by the volumetric stress. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the, the total compressibility of the system, right? So the compressibility of the rock, the compressibility of the fluid in the entire water column, compressibility in any of the pumps, and any of the equipment, right? So the total compressibility of the system is, you know, sort of this, the, the change in the system volume over the initial volume divided by any change in pressure, okay? And so if we solve that equation for delta P, okay, then we have that, and then we can take any equation, uh, as long as we, you know, do the same thing to both sides, we can say divide by delta T, all right? And that would give us uh, an equation that looks like that, and so this is an equation that sort of says that any any change in pressure is going to be uh, proportional to the change in volume, okay? And so that point we're looking for, that that breakdown pressure, the, the pressure at which a fraction initiates, 
is basically when, when, the cha when there's some change in volume, right? It says initially you have a, a just the volume of the water column and everything like that. And you're looking for the point at which the volume is going to change a little bit due to the presence of the initiation of a fracture. Well, the reason you can't ever, the, the, so the reason this doesn't work is because you can never see that. Right? You have this entire, you know, in, in a, this may work at a very shallow depth, but any realistic depth for a petroleum reservoir, right, you're going to have this entire volume of water that extends all the way to the surface of volume of fluid, right, drilling, drilling fluid. And you're tr looking for when that, this enormous volume changes by some infinitesimally small amount, right? There's a tiny little crack initiated. You're never going to see that. You're never going to see that pressure change, okay? And so the clear, the difference between this and, uh, you know, like when we're looking for SH min through a, a, di through a defect, is there, you know, the best, the best estimates of S3 for in a defit are either the formation, the fracture propagation pressure or the initial shut-in pressure. And in both cases there, the fracture is extended well away from the well, well board by that point. You're propagating long fractures that are no longer toughness dominated. And so in there we can actually sense changes in pressure because the fractures are very long. Right? Now here we're looking for, you know, in order for that to work, that last series of equations to work, you have to notice the instant that the fracture propagates. And you just can't ever do it. Right? So it's very difficult to use a test like this to come up with SH max. Um, you know, of course, you, if you remember, we talked about a few weeks ago, uh, before spring break, this idea that the, the entire crust of the Earth is always in the sort of state of incipient failure. And given that, we can bound the stresses in the earth, and that's one way we can estimate. Because we can, you know, measure or estimate the vertical stress very well. We can get S3, uh, assuming it's the minimum horizontal stress. We can get it from DFIT analysis. Then we can sort of bound SH max via these other techniques if we can't measure it directly in some way. So the answer is, uh, not very well. You know, it, it doesn't work.